If you're visiting with us this morning, you're our special guest. If you have your Bible, turn with me this morning, please, uh, to John chapter 21. John chapter 21. And uh, we'll be looking there this morning. And then don't forget tonight, if you're able to be back with us, we start our prayer time at 445 and be back through the life of David. John chapter 21, our reading will probably be lengthy this morning, but I, I promise you the Lord shared something with me that I think will be beneficial for all of us. Amen? Amen. And uh, don't forget, we'll also, I'm going to be mentioning it here in a little bit, but the, uh, the 11th, I want to say it's the 10th or the 11th, the Saturday before Easter, uh, we're going to start a visitation and be going on visitation. And so if you can be here, we'll have more information for that here before too long. All right, John chapter 21 and uh, verse 1. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the sea of Tiberias. And on this wise showed he himself. Uh, there were together Simon. Uh, that's, let me give you a thought there. Isn't that something? That this, is, this is after the cross, friend. He's already rose again, and he's showing himself to his disciples. And uh, we ought to take note of that. Let, that. let that sink in deep. This is not before the cross. This is after the cross, after the grave. Let me, let me bring that up to speed there. Notice the verse 2. There were uh, the, together Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus uh, and Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee and the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples. Simon Peter saith unto him, I go a fishing, saith unto them, rather, I go a fishing. They say unto him, We also go with thee. And they went forth and entered into a ship immediately. And that night, watch this, they caught nothing. <laughs> oh boy, they caught nothing. Um, but when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore. And the disciples knew not that it was he, Jesus. Verse 6, And he said unto them, Cast a net on the uh, right side of the ship, and ye shall find. And they cast therefore. And now uh, they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved, speaking of John, uh, saith, to Peter, saith unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girded his fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked, and he cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came uh, in a little ship, for they were not far from the land, but as it were two hundred cubics, dragging the net with the fishes. It took one boat to drag everything when, when they listened to the Lord. Amen. As soon as they were uh, come to the land, they saw a fire coals there, and fish laid thereon, and bread. Jesus saith unto them, Bring ye of the fish which ye have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to the land, and of great fishes, a hundred and fifty and three, and for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. You don't have to worry about God having it all figured out, brother. If you just listen to him, he'll, he'll take care of it. Verse, verse 12, Jesus saith unto them, speaking to Simon and to the other disciples, come and dine. And none of the disciples durst ask him, who art thou? Knowing that it was Jesus. Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them and fish likewise. This now is the third time Jesus showed himself uh, to his disciples after that he was risen from the dead. There's the Bible. That's what we were talking about. I mean, let's keep our reading. Verse 15. So when they had dined, Jesus saith to Simon, uh, to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith, Yea, Lord, Thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved. 
because he had said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, Feed my sheep. Father, we love you today. Thank you so much for your kindness. And Lord, we pray that you'd help us as we begin to preach. And I ask you, Father, that you'd give us a memory of what we've studied. May the Word of God, uh, Lord, have free course to take a lodging place in our hearts. And, uh, we just, uh, whatever is accomplished in this service, uh, today or from here for out, whatever you do, we'll give you the credit and the glory for it. Speak to our hearts this morning. We'll love you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to uh, think along the line with me. What is going on here, first of all? This is something the Lord has deliberately waited on for a while before he deals with the subject. He is going to deal with something that I think is extremely important to the church, and he's going to use Peter as a, an example. Uh, you remember the conversation the Lord had. He said, look, he said, persecution is going to set in and all of y'all are going to scatter. And Peter said, not me, Lord. He said, I'll die for you. Then no way, I'll, I'll, I'll deny you. And it wasn't long, uh, time had passed, and God's will had begun to take its course. And uh, there our Lord was on a trial in Caiaphas' uh, judgment hall. Outside the judgment hall stood Peter around the fire, warming himself, nourishing the flesh while the Lord Jesus was being persecuted and preparation, uh, preparation was taking uh, course for him to be crucified. And while he was in the room being judged, it was put on trial. Actually, it was an illegal trial, according to tradition in the Word of God. Uh, Peter stands out around the fire, and uh, some folk come around, and a lady comes around. She said, hey, surely you're one of his disciples, for your speech betrayeth thee. In other words, you're one of his. He said, I know him not. And the Bible said Peter began to curse and to mock. I don't know who this is. And in a time of our Lord's life when he was most persecuted right before the cross on a trial, Peter denies the Lord three times. You'll look there and you'll see where it says, I know him not. And there's three different times he denies the Lord. Well, not as though the Lord wants to uh, put Peter in his place. He's wanting to help Peter. And he sees a golden opportunity here to help him. They're out in need. Notice the text. Let's keep it in its context. Uh, they're in need of food, friend. They're needing that which keeps man alive. And that was their occupation. That's what they did. These were fishermen. They had to literally go out and work uh, to feed their family. Somebody ought to park there for a minute in today's society. If a man don't work, he ought not eat. Amen. We ought to work and hold down a job and take care of our family. If not, you're just slothful, friend. Now, you might not be able to find a job. We we'll pray with you about one, but God says you ought to work. Amen. These men were working, taking care of their families, and really, to be honest with you, nothing was transpiring. They, they wasn't getting nowhere. And all of a sudden, in the midst of one of their difficult circumstances, here comes the Lord. And he said, hey, put the net on the right side of the boat. Now, they could have tried to school the Lord. Don't you realize, Lord, you only fish at night. It's the morning. Uh, the time to catch the fish is over with. Wisely here, they listen to the Lord Jesus and they threw, uh, they, they halfway listened, let me say this. He said, put the nets. They threw a net. If they'd have listened to him fully and did everything he said, friend, uh, he would have done exceeding abundantly above all that they could have ever asked or think. But anyhow, they threw the net and uh, they drew the fish in and they were just thrilled to death. And I want to draw your attention to a few things because I want to trace back where Peter began to decline in John 3, uh, 13, rather than John 13. Uh, when, when, when this transpires, I don't know about you, but I really believe if I'd have been around the Lord as much as I was, as they were, and the, seeing the miracles from Lazarus to the uh, miracle where the Lord turned the water into wine. By the way, that's not fermented wine. 
Mock, uh, wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Somebody said, a little alcohol won't hurt you, but read your Bible. God said, you're foolish to drink alcohol. Amen? So they had seen these miracles. And so I honestly believe that if I saw these miracles and uh, a one just took place when I'd been laboring all night long and now I listen to somebody, they didn't even know who he was. They didn't know it was the Lord. We're talking about the disciples. They didn't even know it was him. And, and you and I talk about God's will. Well, God said this and God said that. Let me ask you something, friend. Let me tell you something. I'll never forget this. Doc Robinson said this. He said, uh, when you want to talk about God said, you know, I, I got my problems with these people that God told me. Well, where'd God tell you at? Well, I was riding down the road and a transfer truck went by. God revealed his will to me that way. You've been eating too many green onions is what your problem is. Amen. When God open, God open, when you open this book, God opens his mouth. And when you shut this book, God shuts his mouth. God's not speaking in. Now, can God imply things? Can God reveal things? Absolutely, friend. God speaks through the book, not a dream or a tingling sensation. You just felt like God wanted you. Hey, I got my problem with people telling me God said. Well, where'd God say it at? What chapter is it in? What verse is it in? You say, you put that much authority on the scriptures? Yes, sir, I do. Everything rises or falls on these books. This is the final authority. By the way, it's the King James Bible. And if you can show me a mistake in the King James Bible, I will publicly eat the page. I don't need a reason for another translation which is filled with heresy. By the way, the, new, the NIV takes the resurrection uh, of the Lord out of the Bible. You're going to tell me one of the most important doctrines in the entire faith, uh, Christian faith? You're just going to make up your mind to remove it from the Word of God and say it's okay? I got my problem with these other perversions. And that's what they are. You stay, we need to stick to the Bible God has used in this land to show me one real revival where they've shut the bars down. Men and women have gotten saved under some NIV book. You're attacking the NIV? You're, yes, sir, I am. It's not of God. How, how in the world are you going to perfect something that God wrote years ago? You're just going to get so educated that you're going to correct all the mistakes of the Lord. No, sir, I'm not. You can swallow that lie if you want to. I'm not going to. There is not a mistake in the King James Bible, friend. But yet we've got so educated with our fine books and our fine buildings and our big, uh, big things. We just want to come in and let everybody know that God made a mistake. Let me tell you something. If I thought God made a mistake, I believe I'd find me another God. I'd find me another God. How, what a way to break people's faith. I don't know why I'm laboring on it, but I'm going I'm to keep running on it. I know the Lord will. Hey, look, it started, it started in Genesis. The very first thing the devil did was attack the word of God. Half God said. He'd been doing it all these years. Well, let me tell you something. This book is real. We don't need another perversion. What about the new King James preacher? Take it out of your house too. If you want to read it to study with, look at it, uh, that's fine. But this book right here, friend, is accurate. It is perfect. Show me a mistake, I'll eat the page publicly. Nobody's ever been able to show me a mistake. You bring me any one of them I mentioned, I'll show you where they feel the mistakes. Matter of fact, people are so ignorant. Now, this doesn't mean that they're stupid. Ignorant means they're not aware of it. People are so ignorant of these other versions, they don't even realize that an open homosexual sat on the board to translate those versions. Don't even know what they're reading. I'm telling you facts. I'm giving you facts. I'm not making up this stuff. You can find everything I've, I, I just said, documentate, documentation. Back it up. Stick with it. Hey, let me tell you something. Don't bring no other version around here. No, sir. I mean from the children's literature to whatever, it needs to be the Word of God, the King James Bible. Because I'm going to tell you something. God uses His Word to reach man. There's no, there's no philosophy that I had or 
fluent speech that I have that can help man. Now God may use those talents and those gifts, but it is the word of God Jesus uses to reach mankind. I don't have the mentality or the, or the ability like this book does. Peter comes out and I'll tell you what he did. He had denied the Lord and when he did deny the Lord, uh, the Lord lets it go. And he said, although all men will deny thee, not me, Lord, I'm going to follow you wherever you go. God called his bluff. God brought him right down to the foot of the cross. But had him right there at the cross, friend. Had him right here on the trial, and he wouldn't stand for God. You know what? That's the problem in the church today. We got a lot of coward men. I mean, they, they can lift weights and do all this big thing, but they can't stand for God. Can't get faithful. Listen to this text. Uh, Paul said in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, as you see the day approach. You know what that means? God says, that we ought to encourage one another being in the house of God. And that's what a real man is. A real dad is somebody that brings his children to the house of God. Rather than go, let's go fishing, son. It's Sunday. Shame on you. You don't have to like me. I'm not here to make you like me, amen. I'm here to preach the book. How about grabbing your son or your daughter or your family by the, by the hand and saying, hey, Let's go into the house of God. Let's go to church today. Amen. Let's see what God have for us. Amen. Lord does some things. Peter denied the Lord openly three times. I know him not is what he said. Well, the Lord comes out and all of a sudden, y'all gonna have, we're never going to get out of here. If I, I'll, I'll give you the references. John 13 is what I'm referring to. There was a time the Lord was trying to tell the disciples something. They wasn't listening. They wasn't listening. Much like you and I sometimes. We're deaf to the ear to the will of God. I didn't say all the time. I said sometime. The Lord's got them in the upper room and he's telling them somebody's going to betray me. And if you study the Last Supper, you'll find out that Peter and John are sitting very closely and Peter leans over and he asks John, he says, lean over and ask him who it is that's going to betray him. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't read nowhere that I got to lean over to my brother to ask my brother to find out something for God for me. God said he's not a respecter of person. Uh, he said that we can all come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain help and find grace to help in a time of need. I don't, now look, it's okay to pray, bear ye one another's burdens, but you want to know something. If I need something, I need to know something in my life about God. I'm not going to Greg and saying, hey, can you talk to the Lord for me and find out what he needs me to do? <laughs> well, how about you talking to the Lord? I believe everybody's got the opportunity to talk to the Lord. Well, watch what Peter did. There was something that Peter did in his life that caused a decline in his life. He leaned over at the, at the Last Supper and he asked John to ask the Lord something. And that stuck out to me. What is the problem here? Why can't you talk to, to the Lord, Peter? Well, I promise you, here's what it is. If you go back in John 13, you study it. When the Lord was under persecution, Peter followed afar off. See, that's a lot of people's problem. Follow afar off. In other words, I, I, I don't want God completely out of my life. I, I want him there, but I want God there on my terms. I want God there when I need him. And so that's how it started with Peter. He started following afar off. Just a little bit, you know, just a little miss here and there. And when it came down to a, 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 an important time for God to do something in his life, Peter was so far away from the Lord that he had to go to his brother in Christ, to John, to find out some important information. You can find all that in John 13. But yet, he spoke up with a braggadocious tone and said, I'll never deny thee. I'll never deny you, Lord. I'll never backslide. Oh, not me. Maybe all these guys, but not me. 
So you know what the Lord did? He just let him go his way. The Lord said, okay. And he, he comes to him and he tells him, he said, hey, uh, Satan has sought to sift thee as wheat. <laughs> Watch this. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. Now, what the Lord meant there was this. You're going to be sifted. You're going to be tempted. You open your mouth too much. That's what he's saying. And you're going to go through some hard times, but my prayer is that your faith doesn't fail. Well, lo and behold, you know, why won't we just listen to God? Why we got to argue with God? I mean, I'm sitting back and scratch my head. I've been preaching 30-something years. And it'd be one thing if I sit you down and said, now, Paul, this is my opinion. But if I sit you down and showed you in the Word of God where God says, thou shalt not kill, and you're going to argue with me about abortion, you're stubborn as the day is long. I didn't say it. God did. Why won't people listen to God? Well, here's the thing. The Lord said, Peter, he said, I'm going to pray your faith fell not. Well, here's what happened. Peter got uncomfortable because Peter wasn't getting his way. And he started just a little bit of time falling back, falling back, falling back to where the scripture says he had followed him afar off. Now, don't you get too far, me, Lord. I don't want to lose you. I love you, you hypocrite. You love God. Let me see you t- do something. Now, Lord, don't get out of my sight. Don't turn that corner. I I might need you next week. That's the attitude. He followed him afar off. Here the Lord Jesus is. They've spit on him. They beat him. And they've mocked him. And he's standing in the front of Caiaphas, fixing to be flogged and headed to Calvary. And Peter's standing around a fire, warming his flesh, taking care of him. Hey, look here, it'd be like this. Getting up on a Sunday morning and hitting the, uh, hitting the air conditioning, the thermostat, making sure you're toasty enough before you get out in 15 degree weather to go see the house of God. Amen. You'd nourish in your flesh. That's what he was doing. Standing around there around the fire while they've spit and beat on the Lord and the Lord's in there in front of Caiaphas. And God allows him to go through these things. This woman comes to him. I'll be honest with you. you can, guys, you can get mad at me all you want. The longer I serve, I've seen more faith in women. Our men's about gone. When it comes to standing for God. I thank God we've got some here. I didn't say they were gone. I said I thank the Lord we got some. But I'm telling you right now buddy. In my days in my ministry. I've seen women get on fire for God more than men. He's standing around there. And this lady comes up. Hey aren't you one of his disciples? No I know him not. Three times he denied the Lord around that fire. Now I'm going to take you to the point. And we're going to let you go home. Well, we didn't read that a minute ago. When I opened up, I read a story that was way past that. That had already taken place. Well, time had elapsed. The Lord had already left Caiaphas. He had already been spit on. He had already been mocked. He had already been flogged. He had already been crucified. He had raised. He rose from the dead, and he was uh, sitting at the thr- right hand of the throne of God. But one last time, the third time, he's going to show himself to the disciples. And you know what he chooses to do? He goes on the shore, seashore, in a time of need when they can't catch a fish for nothing, when they're about to starve to death, if you want the honest truth, it's bad times. Maybe Biden's long-lost grandfather was in office. I don't know. But anyhow, food was hard to come by. And the Lord's on the bank and he's got fish and a fire. And then boys start looking out from the, who's that? He said, hey, throw your net on the right side of the boat. You'll catch some fish. None of them asked who it was. My sheep hear my voice. They know me. 
and they follow me. Say, that's the Lord. Peter said, you sh- that's him? And Peter, look, he wouldn't even wait around. He jumped out of the boat. Hey, you got to give him courage. You got to give him credit here. What courage for the Lord? He jumped out of the boat and swam from the boat to where he'd get up there and see the Lord. And the Lord's just sitting there. And when he comes up, he's already, he already knew what Peter's going to do. He got a fire sitting there. Peter comes up around that fire. The habit of the flesh starts warming itself. And between Peter and the Lord is a fire. Now, some of you think you know where exactly where I'm going. You don't. You know part of it. That fire is a picture of judgment. And between the Lord and Peter is the Lord sending a picture of judgment, Peter. You're going to have to get some things straight until there's fellowship between you and I. And I want you to notice something. The Lord allows, it's almost like the others are there when he's talking to Peter after a few minutes. Because he said more than these. Wouldn't you think if they'd have been on the boat, he would have said more than those? That leads me to believe that before the conversation transpired, he had waited till the others could get there. Because he said, you remember what he said, Marty? He said, come and dine. Come and dine, the master calleth, come and dine. You may feast at Jesus' table any time. He who fed the multitude turned the water into wine. He said, come and dine. They've been out there, they're hungry, they're tired, and they all get around the Lord. Can I promise you something? The Lord don't forget anything you and I do on a good and a, and, and a, and a negative sense. You ever thought, you ever forgot anything? I forgot. Have you ever forgot something for, I mean, important to do? You had something important you forgot? Never happened to God. It's never happened to him. The Lord is drawing him in, buddy, and he is fixing to do internal surgery on him. He pulls him to that fire with those other disciples. And the Lord looks at Peter and I. He said, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Yea, Lord. Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He asked him three times. The third time, Peter dropped his head. The word of God said, grieved. And he finally, listened to me, he finally learned the most important lesson in his entire life. It took pain and embarrassment and heartache. But he looked up, Vicky, and you know what he said to the Lord? Thou knowest. Lord, you know right where I'm at. You know. What are you asking me for? I personally believe the saddest words that can be asked to a Christian is, lovest thou me? He said, do you love me, Peter? Yea, Lord. Now watch what he tells him. He said, uh, if you love me, Feed my lambs. What's he talking about? Well, we're sheep, right? Sheep are, it leads me, gives me the impression that sheep are, they might not be a full age, but they're a little older than a lamb. Would everybody agree with that? I think that's what he's saying. Feed my lambs. Let's see. I'm not counting to do a number thing. I'm counting to do a comparison, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Would you say that, uh, and I, I don't know who's saved and who's not saved, but let's just say everyone's saved. Then you got thirteen sheep. Two lambs. Isn't that how y'all feel? 
13 sheep and two lambs. If you love me, you'll feed my lambs. Oh, what's he saying? He's saying, boy, you better get busy bringing the lambs in. You better bring the lambs in. Where they at? What do you mean, Brother Chris? I'm telling you right now, God stirred my soul over these children more than I've ever had in my entire ministry. And you're going to see me on visitation on Saturdays. You, if you want to take a Bible and so win, I want to hit you on the back of that and commend you and, and, and tell you I appreciate you. You can sit there all day, but you know what? I'm fixing to canvas this area like you've never had it canvassed before. They're going to be more literature hung out, and you can get involved in it or not. You can sit home in the thermostat on a cool spring morning and nourish your flesh if you want. You can do that. But I'm ready to go out to some of these little lambs. Don't question me when it starts. Don't do it. Please don't do it. I've sit how long? I ain't sitting no more. We're going, I'm delving in, and we're going to do something for God. Something's going to happen. Amen. It's time, it's time, Chuck, to find the lambs. Where's the little lambs at? What at? Now, they come in all ages. They come from nursery to teens. They're in all ages. I can tell you what it's going to take. If you want to love God, here's what it's going to take. And that's what he's talking about. He's testing his love. He's saying, Did you, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? Yea, Lord, you know I love you. Boy, the thought there is this. You just need to come, and I need to come to conclusion. God knows everything about what's in my heart. He knows it all. Don't try to stand up and convince God in front of other people public that you love God. Don't tell me how much you love God. Show me you love God. I'm tired of seeing actions speak loud. I'm tired of hearing a bunch of stuff. Show me something. What's that date, Marty? The 10th, is it? March 9th or April 9th? What is it? April the 9th is the Sunday, is the Saturday before Easter. So the 9th, and then you got the 16th, I believe it is, or 17th is Easter. Is that correct? Y'all correct me. Anyway, that Saturday before, how many weeks is that away? Four? You got four weeks to mark her off. Four weeks. Well, so-and-so come in from out. So what? Let them sit at the house a couple hours. Let's go lamb hunting. Well, I'll burn the roast. Cut it off and slide it across the counter and unplug it and plug her back in when you get home. Be all right. We're going to have some literature made up. I, I, I don't want to raise the hands. How many of you ever here, uh, don't, don't raise your hand, but you've ever looked someone in the eye and said, Sir, ma'am, if you were to die today, do you know where you'd go? You want to do something for God, so what you need to be doing for the Lord. That's more important than anything. That's almost history in the church today I mean it is it's almost it's almost uh, people don't want to talk about it talk to somebody about their sin talk to somebody about their soul talk to somebody about if they die where they're going are you kidding me he covered that he said feed my lamb feed my sheep I'll never forget this in closing. I've got about five minutes. I remember a missionary. He was talking about missionaries teaching. That's a part of it. Uh, but uh, their job is to go soul winning around the world, winning people. 
You ain't got no, you don't win nobody, you ain't gonna be teaching nobody. We're not gonna be winning nobody. You ain't teach who you gonna teach. This man came through and he said this, and I know you'll remember. This was 30 something years ago. The man said, The church that will not evangelize will fossilize. That's what he said. Dead bullseye. He hit it on the he hit he hit a bullseye. So I've sit back, tried to get to know everybody, tried to love everybody. I know I'm different. That's okay. But I'm I'm fixing to target the children in this community like you've never seen before in your life. Okay. You got it? Yeah. It's going to take time. It's going to take dedicated time and dedicated finances. It is. It's going to cost money. Look around. You can keep going this route if you want. And I can move on. We can do that. I don't think that's God's will. Matter of fact, I'm happy. Thrilled where I'm at. Don't have no intention. Or you can follow leadership. And I believe you will. I know you will. But this is getting old to me. Hello? Yeah. Amen. It's getting old. It's time to leave some kids around this place. If family wants to get in, amen. We, 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 family can come in, but I'm telling you right now, they're going, look here, think what you want. It's okay. In my mind, every part of this ministry, here's the ministry, here's the children's ministry. You don't have to agree. You don't have to. If you agree, I appreciate it. <laughs> We're spinning our wheels, man. Listen how quiet it is. Just a minute, you'll hear one back there. Just one. Little lamb. There's one. Listen. Beautiful. Did y'all hear that? Yeah. Did y'all catch that? Listen. Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Feed my lambs. So here's what we're going to do. I got it figured out. We're going to take most of the money and move it. Praise the Lord, Brother Chris. Bam! Just move it. If you was in the stock market, I'm not saying you are, and you ought not be. It could be gambling. <laughs> I want my money in something that's going to profit me, don't you? I want to, I want to invest in something that's going to bring a profit. Amen. So I'm fixing to pour my life and money into these kids in this community. I am. With or without you. this panic I'm going to say this and panic's going all over the room Vicky I'm only sharing it with you I mean total panic and nervousness when I say this that means a bus route <laughs> amen <laughs> we just got rid of one no, we got rid of something that looked like a, I wouldn't put my kids on it. No letter, no nothing. Just pull up. It's down here at the back end of the church. Don't know where your children are going. Don't know nothing. Hello? 
Hello? If I pull up in a van that's unlettered, that's unmarked in this day and time, are you putting your grandchildren on that bus? No way! Everything decently in order. PR, public recognition. PR. We liable, to, we liable to give heart attacks with a, with a church van running with letters from Heritage Baptist Church in these, in, on these streets. Man, what's going on up yonder? They got a church van. They running a bus route. Then people lost their mind. Don't tell me it ain't going to work. I've not seen it work. You got to have the people though. And I've got two committed. Hold on, we coming, Debbie. We coming. It's quiet in here. I hope we never have another service like it in my life. It'd be all right with me, Paul, if you got to go back there and get them all. Hold on, y'all quiet down there. Suffer the little children to come unto me. Such is the kingdom of God. That's the Lord. The Lord said that. I'm asking you to pray with me between now and this visitation and be here. If you're not comfortable soul winning, we're going to have some literature you can pass out. You can, you can put it in, in on it. All you got to do is go up to the door, put it on the door, put it on the doorknob, put it. Got to be careful about going to people's mailboxes. You're liable to get shot. Don't go in the mailbox. But let's do something. Let's get them in here. What are we going to do when we get them in here? We figured that out what we do. Let's get them in there. Let's get them in here. Amen. Why? Change our church. It'll change our church. Amen. Little lives getting saved. Growing up, you never know what we could do. What an opportunity. I'm so glad I'm part of it. We're going to target these kids. Some of you have been here. You know the neighborhoods more than I do. You know where to go. And maybe you've been waiting on me to do this. Some of you may, may have been waiting on me. Preacher, when are you going to? And if you have, praise the Lord. I'm grateful for that. But it's time to get on our knees. To get serious about winning people to Christ. And I, I really believe the Lord have a start. With children. With children. Somebody told me the other day, and here's what they said. You don't know these people? When a family comes in that has children, and they come in and there's no children, do you know what the chances are they're going to stay? I don't care. Hey, you can preach all you want. Now, don't misunderstand me. God has power, and God can use the Bible to change people. You don't buy a house unless it's attractive, friend, unless it has a pull to it. You don't commit yourself somewhere unless you want to commit yourself somewhere. And I personally believe that God is wanting to change this church Amen. through a children's ministry. Amen. I know I'm going to be criticized. I don't really care, Chuck. I really don't. I mean, a lot of guys are building their churches with seniors. You know, taking the platforms out, moving it out, having the stage and the stro strobe light. Why can't I just do it for children? Amen. 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 Just center everything around a bunch of kids. Centered around the Lord and get them centered around the uh, 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 children. And maybe we'll see a ripple effect for the parents. It's been good to be in God's house. Stand with me if you would, please. Let me ask you a question. As you're standing, heads are bowed and eyes are closed. You're here this morning. I'd like to ask you a question before she comes with a song. She's coming, making her way with a song. And you can just play us something, if you would, please, softly. Maybe you're here this morning. You say, Preacher, no doubt in my mind, I love the Lord. Well, we're going to have some opportunity to see that soon. And uh, maybe this morning, God spoke to your heart.
about children, about loving the Lord and doing your part in the church. I want to commend you. Please do so. Please don't. Hey, he talking to you about throwing a net over the right side <laughs> or doing something. Man, get involved. God's going to bless you. Maybe you're here this morning you've never truly been saved. I don't know. You may, you may have never given your heart to Christ. Oh, what a wonderful day to do that. Maybe you're here and you say, Preacher, I need to be saved. Let me remind you, the death, burial, and resurrection of God's Son. Uh, if you'll ask Him into your heart. Turn in repentance and faith and ask Christ in your heart. He'll save you today. Maybe you're here and you say, Preacher, I really believe the Lord will have us try to reach some kids. We're going we're to pray with you about this, Brother Chris. And that's you. Would you slip your hand up with me? Well, I can see it. God bless your heart. I see your hands. The Lord knows our need. Amen. It's been so good to be in God's house. Don't forget, real quickly, as we close, tonight we'll be back at 445 for prayer. And then, uh, Brother Marty, did you say the 26th of March we're going to have a work day? And uh, we'll be working on the church. And then don't forget, I said the 9th of April, didn't I? The 9th of April, uh, we'll have a uh, visitation to start it off with and talk more about that. And then I know there's going to be many that's going to be going uh, every other Saturday, if not every Saturday soon. And you do what you can. Nobody expects you to do more than you can. We, God expects us to do what we can do and nothing no more. All right, it's been good to be in God's house. Brother Chuck, why don't you dismiss us? Thank you.